Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this session, we will consider causes and features of metabolic acidosis, broad mechanisms leading to the condition called metabolic acidosis. This term refers to a reduction in plasma bicarbonate concentration from its normal value of 22 to 25 milliequivalents per liter. Any reduction in plasma bicarbonate as per the henderson hasselbalch equation will lead to an increase in hydrogen ion concentration in plasma and therefore acidosis. Temporary compensatory mechanisms for correcting the acidosis would be a hyperventilation blowing off some carbon dioxide so as to keep carbon dioxide levels also low. However, the compensation is most often incomplete and the hydrogen ion concentration will be higher than 40 nano equivalents per liter and therefore the pH lower than normal when bicarbonate levels drop. Why would bicarbonate levels decrease in plasma? The kidneys may fail to reabsorb enough bicarbonate to the proximal tubule or generate enough bicarbonate in the distal tubule. Or bicarbonate may be consumed by the fixed acid protons. The fixed acid anions will also compete with bicarbonate for the limited anion space which is determined by the total number of cations. Similarly, chloride which is the other major anion in plasma apart from bicarbonate may also compete for bicarbonate space. So these are the four major mechanisms leading to a reduction in bicarbonate. Reduced formation, increased consumption, competition for anion space by the fixed acid anions or competition for the space by chloride anions. We will first consider the three major renal mechanisms which help in maintaining plasma bicarbonate and see that any derangement of these mechanisms can lead to a reduction in plasma bicarbonate. In the earlier lectures, we have seen that the three major mechanisms in kidney are bicarbonate reabsorption in proximal tubule, generation in distal tubule and elimination of fixed acid anions by the kidney. Any disturbance in the proximal tubule which reduces bicarbonate reabsorption will lead to a condition called proximal renal tubular acidosis and any disturbance in the distal tubule which affects bicarbonate regeneration leads to distal renal tubular acidosis. There are two types, types 1 and 4. PRTA is actually type 2 renal tubular acidosis. And there are some who think that there is a type 3 which is a mixed disorder. A third major function of the kidney is to filter the fixed acid anions and eliminate them unreabsorbed. Therefore, elimination of the fixed acid anions depends on normal glomerular filtration. Renal failure is by definition a reduction in glomerular filtration rate. The normal is 125 ml per minute. If it reduces to less than 60 ml per minute, the condition is called renal failure. And in renal failure, filtration of fixed acid anions is going to be low because the glomerular filtration rate itself is low. And therefore, they will be held back in plasma. The molecular mechanisms leading to proximal and distal renal tubular acidosis will be considered in the next lecture. But we will see the broad features now. In the renal causes of metabolic acidosis, we will consider the two renal tubular acidosis first, proximal and distal renal tubular acidosis. In these conditions, formation of bicarbonate in the kidneys is lower, bicarbonate concentration in plasma decreases and the space vacated by bicarbonate is filled with chloride. Therefore, in these conditions, there is hyperchloremia if you compare with the normal level shown here the chloride levels are higher. However, 
because formation of fixed acid anions is normal. There is no metabolic disorder in this condition. And elimination of the fixed acid anions in the kidneys is normal because glomerular filtration rate is normal. The anion gap per se is normal. Therefore, this is a normal gap acidosis with hyperchloremia. Whereas, in renal failure, where there is inadequate glomerular filtration, the fixed acid anions are not eliminated adequately. They are held back in plasma and because their levels increase in plasma, there is competition for the anion space. Bicarbonate levels therefore decrease. Chloride levels may also decrease. So, in this condition, the anion gap would be higher. Compare that with the normal that is shown here. Whereas, chloride levels may be normal or low and in some states even higher. So, it would be inappropriate to comment on the chloride status in high gap acidosis categorically. It can be normal, low or even high. However, the anion gap when you calculate it from a serum electrolyte report will definitely be high. Now, let us look at how the anion gap would be calculated and what would be the profile of serum electrolyte reports in the renal tubular acidosis and renal failure. In renal tubular acidosis, we already saw that bicarbonate levels are lower and chloride levels are higher than normal. There is a hyperchloremia. Bicarbonate is lower than normal. And when you calculate the anion gap, because these are normally unmeasured anions, Though you measure serum albumin in terms of grams per deciliter, there is no way to estimate the electrolyte contribution due to serum albumin. The only way to calculate this is by totaling the cations and subtracting the measured anions, so that you get the unmeasured anions. When you calculate the anion gap, we have 144 here and 134 here, the anion gap will still be normal. If you look at the serum potassium, serum potassium will be lower in proximal renal tubular acidosis and type 1 distal renal tubular acidosis. 2 is not a magical number. I have just put it there like that so that you appreciate that there would be hypokalemia in two types of renal tubular acidosis. Type 2 which is proximal renal tubular acidosis and type 1 distal renal tubular acidosis. Whereas, in type 4 distal renal tubular acidosis, there is actually hyperkalemia. However, in all these conditions, PRTA, DRTA types 1 and 4, the anion gap will be normal and there will be hyperchloremia. Let us look at a probable serum electrolyte report in renal failure. Of course, because it is renal failure, the way we know that there may be renal failure is by looking at serum creatinine. That is the clinical test most often done. If there is an elevation of serum creatinine, then the inference is that glomerular filtration rate is lower. So, serum creatinine is higher and therefore, we have diagnosed renal failure and a probable serum electrolyte report may be like this because the fixed acid anions are not filtered adequately and eliminated, their levels will go up and therefore, bicarbonate levels would be lower. Chloride levels may also be lower. We have already seen that chloride may be low, normal or even high. Here, I am taking the case that it is lower than normal. When we calculate anion gap, 144 here and 122 here, therefore, Anion gap is 144 minus 122, which is 22 milliequivalents per liter. You would appreciate that there is an increase in anion gap. If serum albumin is 4 grams per deciliter, that can account for 10 milliequivalents per liter of the anions, and the rest of the anions must be from fixed acid anions, which are held back and not eliminated. Also, notice that there will be hyperkalemia in renal failure. 
And why this hyperkalemia comes about? We will see as we go. We will now move on to non-renal causes of metabolic acidosis. There are some gastrointestinal conditions in which metabolic acidosis can occur. These are conditions where the bicarbonate which comes into the intestines is lost in stools. The examples of such states are diarrheal states where the transit time is too fast and a lot of the intestinal fluid is lost. The bicarbonate rich fluids coming into the small intestine for example in pancreatic secretion will be lost in stools and therefore total body bicarbonate can reduce. Similarly, in post surgical states suppose there has been intestinal surgery and a drain is placed in the small intestine, bicarbonate rich fluid may come out of the drain leading to a reduction in plasma bicarbonate. In yet another condition, a surgical condition called ureterosigmoidostomy, what does this mean? The ureters coming from both kidneys are anastomosed with a sigmoid colon. The ureters normally would drain into the bladder and urine will go out through the urethra. But say if there is bladder cancer and the bladder has been removed, to facilitate urine drainage, the ureters will be transplanted into the sigmoid colon so that urine drains out of the rectum. In this condition, the urine being a chloride rich fluid, the intestine has anion exchanges which would absorb chloride in exchange for bicarbonate. But here we are giving chlorides that are to be removed from the body. Chlorides that are to be excreted, an excess of chlorides come into the sigmoid colon and that chloride will set up a bicarbonate exchange. The chloride will get absorbed and bicarbonate will be lost in the stools. So these conditions are examples of intestinal states in which there can be loss of base, a reduction in plasma bicarbonate will result therefore. And what would be the electrolyte report like? Because there is a primary decrease in plasma bicarbonate, there would be hyperchloremia. Chlorides will fill the space vacated by bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is actually low. And if you calculate the serum an anion gap, it is 144 minus 134, which is still at 10 milliequivalents per liter. That is normal and that can be accounted for by serum albumin alone which tells us that there are not many fixed acid anions. The anion gap is normal in this condition. Also notice that there is hyperkalemia. In all these reports that I am showing here, I am making the assumption that serum sodium is normal. Please do not construe this as hyponatremia. I am just using that number so as to keep this 144, that is all. I am not making any commitment as to what happens to serum sodium levels in any of these conditions. The assumption is that it is normal for our discussion. Another iatrogenic cause of metabolic acidosis, iatrogenic meaning that comes up due to some treatment procedure is chloride loading. If a patient is receiving intravenous fluids for some reason, it could be a low blood pressure or dehydration. If the intravenous fluid is normal saline without any bicarbonate in it, then there is chloride loading, too much chlorides infused without proportionate bicarbonate in it. That will lead to a hyperchloremia and therefore, a reduction in plasma bicarbonate where chlorides compete for the anion space. Just like in the high gap acidosis, the fixed acid anions compete for the bicarbonate space. Chloride may also compete for the bicarbonate space in conditions where there is chloride loading. And here if you calculate the anion gap, it is still going to be normal. Notice that in this condition also there is hyperkalemia. So even in chloride loading, you have a normal gap hyperchloremic 
acidosis. Last but not least, in fact, a major cause of metabolic acidosis are the really metabolic causes. Diabetic ketoacidosis, starvation acidosis, which is again a ketosis, and lactic acidosis. When there is reduced tissue perfusion, one might get lactic acidosis. In these conditions, the output of fixed acids by the tissues is more. And there are two ways in which these fixed acids will reduce plasma bicarbonate. One is that they put out protons which will consume the plasma bicarbonate to become carbon dioxide. The anions which are formed from the fixed acids will also compete with bicarbonate for the anion space. These are two ways in which an increased production of fixed acids will lead to a reduction in plasma bicarbonate. In this condition, not only bicarbonate may reduce, but the fixed acid anions may also compete with chloride. Chlorides may also reduce, but we have already seen that chlorides may be low or normal or even high. If you calculate the anion gap, this plus this minus chloride plus bicarbonate, you would notice that the anion gap is higher. So what you get in these altered metabolic states is a high gap acidosis with normal or low or high chloride. There can also be exogenous fixed acid anions. Some cases of poisoning will result in metabolic acidosis because they also produce anions which will compete for the anion space. We have seen what a serum electrolyte report would look like. There will be low bicarbonate, high anion gap, low or normal or high chloride and of course hyperkalemia. If we look just at the anion space and compare with the normal distribution of anions, we have already seen that in the renal tubular acidosis, there is a normal gap metabolic acidosis with hyperchloremia. And in renal failure, we have seen that there is a high gap acidosis. Then we considered the non-renal causes, we just saw the altered metabolic states. Now these resemble renal failure in that they have a high gap acidosis. The gastrointestinal conditions and chloride loading look like renal tubular acidosis in that they have a normal gap hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. We will group them, the conditions that we have learnt so far as high gap acidosis and normal gap acidosis. These are the renal conditions, renal failure giving high gap acidosis and the renal tubular acidosis having a normal anion gap. These are the altered metabolic states and exogenous poisoning. Here we have the gastrointestinal conditions, small bowel diarrhea, small bowel drainage, urethrosigmoidostomy and chloride loading with intravenous fluids which are rich in just chloride like normal saline. So in these states there is hyperchloremia whereas here chloride can be normal, low or please note even high. In these conditions alone except PRTA and DRTA type 1 there is hyperkalemia, serum potassium will be higher whereas only in these two types of metabolic acidosis, there is hypokalemia. Another important lab report would be urine pH. Urine pH would be less than 5.5 in these types of metabolic acidosis where there is hyperkalemia, whereas these two are the only exceptions where the urine pH can be more than 5.5. Normally it is 5.5. In you and me in the normal state, urine pH is less than 5.5. But in these two states alone, it can be higher and sometimes even frankly alkaline as high as 7.4 or even 8. Urine can be frankly alkaline in these two states. 
the molecular mechanisms we will see in the next lecture where we consider these two types of acidosis along with the other distilled renal tubular acidosis in greater detail. This is the same listing like we had before, just that the conditions leading to lactic acidosis are elaborated here. In the next lecture, we will consider these three types of renal tubular acidosis and their molecular mechanisms in some detail. Thank you for watching.